What was the main factor that allowed the Franco regime to remain in power for so long? I think it's very hard, if not impossible, to isolate a single factor. Um, the first and most probably the most important one is the fact that the military victory is um, so complete um, and the Republicans the, the Republican movement then fractures really irredeemably in exile. So there isn't, uh, there isn't an effective political opposition. Um, the Allies are not interested in invading at the end of the first world, at the end of the Second World War. So Franco is left un, un, unmolested, essentially. However, had had the regime not got onto a firmer economic footing in the 1960s, and had it had life not become more open. And more possible then I think it would have had a very hard time. So I, I, I think it's an evolution, I think it's an evolution, um, a very firm con um, imposition of power in the 19, uh, at the end of the 19, of, 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 of the Spanish Civil War, um, but then a gradual broadening. Franco wasn't a very ambitious man in terms of politics, he wanted Spain to be governable. So he was much more interested in keeping people quiet than in um, getting them to do um, anything kind of grand. He wasn't going to invade anywhere, for example. What role does historical memory play in changing the conversation about the Civil War and the subsequent repressive dictatorship? I think that's a good question, and I think that's quite a, a hard one to answer, because in some ways, what historical memory has done has been to um, bring back older arguments about who was responsible for the civil war um, and um, it, yeah, who was worse. What it has done is establish incontrovertibly and completely definitively the scale of the Francoist violence, which was enormous on the Western European um, scale. It has also, and again I think this can't be overemphasised at a local and family level, it, it's found people. It, it, it has allowed many families to rebury um, their relatives or at least know and commemorate were, and visit where their, their, their burial spots and I, I, I do think that's been very, very important. You mentioned that Spain's transition to democracy cannot act as a model because of its unique situation, but are there any lessons that other countries can apply to their own transitions? I think it's been shown that it is possible to have a peaceful transition to democracy. It's not the only country that's shown that, but, it, but it's shown that, that that can happen. It's shown that overt conflict can be avoided and that the threat of conflict can be managed, because that's essentially what the elites do. They manage the threat of conflict, um, <clears throat> uh, particularly from the army. Um, the other thing I think that it can has shown is that you can use the institutions of a non-democratic regime in a democratic way. So those are, I think, you know, it, I don't think, as I said, that any transition will ever follow the Spanish model because the conditions are so peculiar and so um, context specific. But I do think that there's a more general sense of what might be possible under, you know, difficult.